Welcome, race fans. One more night. I'll tell you what, Daytona International Speedway, real sim racing league scheduled for 80 laps on the board here tonight. And I'll tell you what, they are all here in the booth with me tonight. A.J. Browning tagging along with us for the ride tonight. Tell you what, you can catch him and Jesse, the outlaw James, on Thursday and Sunday nights. Tracy Flip Robinson. And I'll tell you what, Magic Fingers, Jesse calls him the legend, John the Bad Boy Wrestling working the magic fingers on the cameras here tonight. Then Tracy, 80 laps here at Daytona. I know everybody's getting pretty tired of it, but I'll tell you what, these boys are looking pretty good out here tonight. Yeah, it should be a good great race out here at Daytona, J.D., and I'm looking at the roster sheet. It looks like they had 42 cars at least on the roster, but we have 37 right here right now in warm-up. tell you, that's a big lot of cars out there on the track. should make it a fun and interesting race. John Gregorio, uh, he's qualified on the pole here tonight, guys. And I'll tell you what, uh, Gregorio uh, finished 14th out of 15 in that duel, number one. But I'll tell you what, uh, qualified uh, in the qualifying session, got himself a, a, the front row seat. And then outside him, Tracy, Tyler Price going to start on the front row. He finished first in the second duel they had. And, of course, so the qualifying run he made uh, put him right outside next to Gregorio. So, uh, i tell you what, we're going to have a blast here tonight. And i tell you, A.J. AJ Browning, I know you've, uh, you've been around the Daytona Horn with uh, Jesse here for a bit. Uh, what's your feelings about Daytona? Uh, J.D., uh, I, did, I ran the, uh, the Daytona 500. It was a 43-car field. Uh, what we're expecting tonight is a huge, huge pack of cars, man. Uh, <laughs> from front to back, they're going to be two, three wide. It's really a lot of excitement. Um, what iRacing's done uh, with their Super Speedway package and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be checking out most of it from pit road. I'm gonna be running up and down pit road, getting the uh, getting the info on the teams and uh, seeing who's fixing damage or what. Hopefully, we have no damage, but uh, it's gonna be an exciting race tonight. You bet. I'll tell you what. As long as they keep the track dryers off the track, I think we're gonna have a fun night tonight, Tracy. So you got my thoughts exactly. Keep them jet dryers out of there. We'll be good to go. Don't need to have nobody breaking a suspension park and getting up into one of those. Uh, I've been watching them in practice here, Jay. It looks like a lot of fast cars. Uh, guys are pushing each other pretty good. I see a couple of them paired up now using that two-car tandem right out on the track, J.D. Yeah, you know, uh, the other thing, too, uh, for those of you tuning in live, ETV Live, it's the only choice, Cowboy, talking about that new chat room over there. I see a bunch of you uh, in there already. Of course, uh, looks like uh, a mechanical arm. That's going to be Danny Gabaldon. He's in there. And Zimmerman, I see you in there, too. And uh, James South watching the race tonight. And uh, you know what? This is a brand-new chat room. I don't like it either, Cowboy. So uh, hang on to your saddle horn. We're going to put a new one up here uh, in the next uh, few days. So uh, we're just trying some things out. Had some issues with the last one as uh, we uh, keep updating and uh, beta testing our new live page. So I uh, hope everybody's enjoying it. Hey, and if you got one of them square, old-fashioned screens, hey, you click on that link down there at the bottom there, and it'll take you back to the uh, 4x3 or the square screen. But uh, for those of you at the wide screen, enjoy the ride tonight. And so we get set to go here with Real Sim Racing League uh, and their uh, first uh, inaugural race for the season here on ETV Live. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Joey James and uh, John. He's the guys that uh, are in charge here. Uh, uh, a heck of a, a, a couple of guys here. And they've been working together for the last uh, week or so, uh, putting this thing all together for them. And it looks like we may be up uh, broadcasting their entire season for them. I hope, and uh, everything's looking pretty good. But uh, for right now, it's Daytona, and uh, tell you what, uh, we'll why don't we go ahead and take it down trackside? I believe the Cactus Cuties are standing by with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Oh. 
the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right, and we are back. I tell you what, uh, probably need to do a little bit of adjusting on that autopilot playlist. Uh, and uh, we're actually supposed to have the grid come up um, after the national anthem. But uh, Tracy. Beta testing. Uh, beta testing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, uh, you know, we have set, uh, we've set quite a few bars. Actually, Don Westling has set quite a few bars here at ETV Live. And, of course, the latest one, uh, you know, taking that picture, pumping it up just a little bit bigger. But I tell you, we've got a few surprises up our sleeves here at ETV Live. Me and the bad boy are going to be working on one of them here a little bit later on tonight after the race. But I tell you what, always in beta test and uh, wouldn't have it any other way. That's uh, what keeps me busy throughout the day. But I tell you what, uh, these boys here tonight, real sim racing. We've done some work for these guys in the past. Wonderful outfit. And I'll tell you, man, uh, a little plug for these guys. Uh, if you enjoy the racing environment, you like to get out here and uh, and uh, mix it up with these guys, strap one of these babies on. RealSimRacing.com is where it's at. And a real smart-looking website over there. They've got a couple of divisions running. they got a whole house full of drivers over there, Tracy. And uh, I'll tell you, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've been watching them. Uh, we've been having a great time broadcasting all these races. These guys... Look like they've got things figured out, and I said it's going to be a f fun race to broadcast tonight, J.D. You bet. And uh, tell you what, practice uh, winding down here. Guys are fine-tuning, making some last-minute adjustments. Uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, teamwork uh, going on out here as we watch some of these guys. Uh, teamed up and uh, working that draft here a little bit. So uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we're getting set to take the same green now. Again, the field has already qualified. The grid is already set. John Gregorio, Tyler Price on the front row. Chris Owens, Cameron Mattis in the second row. Row three is Doug Roth and Ed Williams Jr. James Daly and uh, Jeff Addison in row four. In row five, Adam Roberts and Guy Snyder as uh, we get this thing ready to roll here just momentarily. Looks like they're getting ready, J.D. They're getting all the cars again, starting to get them lined up on the track. The crews are pushing them out there, uh, getting them all lined up behind the pace car. So it should be shortly we get every guy, everyone out there, and they're going to be rolling off. You bet I hear them. Uh... I hear the motors firing up and a lot of horsepower down there, guys. 80 laps on the grid here tonight. This is race number one here for the Real Sim Racing League here at Daytona. And I tell you, what, this is a uh, this is actually a reschedule. It was supposed to have happened Monday night, guys, but uh, we're doing it here on Wednesday night. So uh, you know, one more time, John Gregorio, he's going to pick up the green flag here tonight. He's on the uh, front row in the poles position. Tyler Price on the outside as we get set for a real exciting night here at Daytona. Two and a half mile track, Tracy, and the temperature is, uh, looks pretty decent out there, so uh, track temps uh, and uh, ambient temperature should have that much of an effect on anything here tonight. Looking for some, some pretty fast speeds here in excess of uh, 200 miles an hour for sure, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on cars that are doing the tandem pushing, watching for them, that car behind them to be ducking out and switching position, uh, not trying to overheat that old motor, J.D. You bet, and uh, pace cars uh, got them headed down, uh, headed down uh, 
through the turn here, and I'll tell you what, uh, sucking them belts up and uh, a little bit of anxiety I'm sure each one of them are feeling, and especially the guys in the back, the boys out in front, Gregorio and Price, are probably thinking, you know, who's, who's going to take the, uh, the first lap here? And it's pretty much a flip of the coin. We'll see how this outside runs, uh, this outside line runs here at Daytona. Of course, talking to AJ, AJ has uh, spent some time out here on the track. He's uh, burned a few tires off himself here. And uh, tell you what, uh, AJ, uh, you know, a lot of pack racing that we've seen here lately, I uh, haven't seen too much of that two-by-two two stuff uh, that uh, everybody was uh, yakking about here for a long time. But uh, good to see that pack racing come back. Yeah, JD, uh, you know, a lot of the races I've seen, um, you know, got a couple of tandems at the front, top ten. You, you know, you see a couple two pairs break off, but uh, a lot of the a lot of the pack, they're just going to be stuck nowhere to go. Um, you know, probably into that first pit stop, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. If they do make it through the green flag stops, then you're going to see a lot of two-car tandems, uh, and uh, and the rest of the field just catching up with each other. You know, uh, one thing we're going to be looking out for too is that uh, danger zone coming off of turn four, get down to uh, the apron down there, across that apron line down there. You got to get that pony woed up before you hit that commit line on uh, pit road to uh, make it in there safely. You got to keep that uh, maybe down at 55 miles an hour as uh, you head down pit road. Pace car is off, green flag is out, and we are racing at Daytona International Speedway. This is the Real Sim Racing League's inaugural race for the season, guys. So far, two by two on going into turn one. Yeah, it looks like the outside line got a decent start, JD. It's down to about three cars up top as uh, quite a few of them have moved down to that bottom lane. Looks like the 56, 4, and 94 all up on that high line getting past on the uh, low line. And uh, they are leaders right now leading it around is uh, John Gregorio doing a great job out there. He's actually getting a, a pretty good push from Tyler Price. You bet. And I'll tell you what, you know, it takes a lot of patience to get that upper line more. Yeah, I guess, tell you what, like, they're really racing out there pretty good. These guys are uh, single file line here early in the race. Looks like they're taking it easy. Uh, still got a couple cars on the high side. and uh, Looks like we're starting to get a couple groups broken up here. Not seeing any uh, two cars pushing each other out there, AJ. Yeah, pretty much single file as you look through the, uh, through the top ten. Uh, I see one car there. He's in the, uh, I believe that's the fifth. Yeah, the 56. He he was on the high line. He was up there a couple spots. He had to drop back, but uh, it's looking pretty pretty much single file there from the top 20. These guys are really just looking like that they want to come out and uh, get in the line and then just lock some laps here to start. Yeah, it looks like Gregorio on that 23 and the 62 of Chris Owen hooked up and just trying to pull away from the pack. They're getting a little bit of space out there, but they have to keep an eye on uh, that 262 car to maybe start getting hot. But he's uh, poking his nose out there to that right side of the car to get cooled off. So far, they're being unchallenged out there. Still have two cars on that outside row. Working at, looks like, two team cars doing a great job. Like the 41 of Chris Parker and possibly the 94 of Jeff Addison. Tracy, something I didn't necessarily start, start. One car did actually go all the way to the back. He started 16th. That was Nathan Bowers. And uh, he just pulled off, let the whole pack go. Right now he's running 35th. So there's one car that uh, is definitely, you know what I mean, counting on maybe the field getting in, getting in a wreck and uh, hoping hoping that, uh, you know, he can just get, th get through their fenders clean. Yeah, definitely go. With a lot of laps in this race to go. But we do have them racing side by side here. A little towards the front. Tell you a great race right now. These guys are working their way around the track, uh, working on a side-by-side -side action. Guys are actually closing in, moving them. Chris Owens now just took the lead, followed in second place by the 43 of Doug Ralph Ross, and then in third place the 23 John Gregorio moving back a few positions. 
Yeah, Chris Owens had the lead, but now uh, yeah, Doug Roth and uh, that John. No, it's Adam Roberts in the 88. Uh, looks like they're going to prevail. They got a two-card tandem hookup right now. It looks pretty good. And uh, that four that four card draft up on the hotline trace here looking pretty good. Um, you know they they got out there and um, they moved up a couple spots, gained some track position. So hotline's going to prevail here. Yeah, did a great job challenging out there. Lose a little space now, falling back just a little bit. You know I've watched them race out here, and you see that high line get a pretty good charge on the low line, uh, being up there running right with them. Then it's just like. They hit, somebody threw an umbrella out and they go cars into fall back gate to 10 spot. I'm sure it's just a matter of, uh, as we got a few cars down on the apron once again, and uh, that one is a number four of Cameron Manis. And I'm trying to see the other car there. Uh, looks like the 34 car also falling to the back of the back of Chris Beck. Yeah, Tracy, uh, one, of, one of the things I was wondering you know a, a lot of the Daytona races I've seen uh, I, I don't see them spread out like this it really surprises me uh, a lot of the races I've seen you know a lot of them get really bunched up you know I mean even the people at the back you know they all want to go to the front I see a lot of people just uh, just hooking them their two car tandem so this is very very smart from this RSR uh, racing group here um, you know to have a good clean race and uh, you know we may be seeing green flag pit stops uh, maybe even more than once in this race yeah, guys, I got a communication from J.D. He's having a little issue with his uh, microphone, so he'll be back right with us here shortly. But it uh, looks like we got a, a group of four cars out front there, A.J. Looks like they're all part of one team. They said uh, the car skin colors are, and they're doing a great job working their way forward. Looks like you got the 94, 33, 18, and also 75 all from Simpsy doing a great job there on that top line trying to work together. Yeah, Tracy, I just noticed that. Yeah, they all blend together. That's definitely some teamwork going on. It looks like four Richard Petty cars up there in the high line. Yeah, it looks like them guys are going to be hooked nose to tail probably this entire race as possible. But they're getting that high line to work and also got the, the number three car of Scott Brotherton working his way up there just drafting off each one of them cars. That 75 car is Landon Huffman, 18 is Chad Schilling. And I'm trying to remember the other numbers here real quick. And the 33, is that the 83? 33, 83 is Jay Horton. And then that uh, 94 car is Jeff Addison, all for the same team, uh, them feet. I do believe they've taken the lead there on uh, they're working their way up as uh, Doug Roth is now your leader in the 43 followed in second place by 88 of Adam Roberts and then a third is a 27 of Guy Snyder I'm also checking out uh, 91 Ninety one car of uh it's uh Jeff Eden and then you got um behind him you got the forty one of Thomas Parker. And that bottom line the nine of uh, Bill Schumler. Yeah, I'm kind of in the back here looking there, AJ. A lot of cars in this lead group still. Just kind of in the back draft you've got two cars actually working their way on the outside and with a head of steam coming will be the number seven of Blake Jones being pushed by the 54 of Bill Fields doing, I mean, coming pretty fast around that outside, making up a lot of positions here. Actually, they just uh, lost contact. That just slowed them down. But man, were they making moves. We car a car down towards the apron, having to work his way back up there in the front of the group. Yeah, Trace, what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, you got the top 10 up there. They're side by side. There's checking up going on up there. There's a little bit of checking up. That's allowing this this uh, this group back here to just stay in line. Ease right back up there, man. Uh, it's like the calm before the storm. <laughs> I think they're all going to be punched up here pretty soon. Yeah, but right now I'll tell you they got a 
pretty good looking run going out there and I think believe we got a new leader. It's going to be Jeff Addison of uh, the Simpy cars and uh, followed by the 83 of Jay Horton, 18 of Chad Schilling and at fourth is Doug Ross. So let's say with them keen team cars got hooked up together and they've got one of them out there in the lead getting a great push by that number three. Yeah, that, uh, you have that three car, South Brotherton pushing, uh, pushing Landon Huffman, and then, uh, yeah, the rest of his team collars or whatever, they all set, uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth there, and, uh, move Scott Brotherton to lead as a 75 Huffman. He's going to try to hook up on that outside and get his, uh, team collars there hooked up on the outside. Yeah, I was just watching that as he, uh, put up the track and had to let the three, pretty much let the three go by him. But he's still got that 41 car right behind him of Chal Chalmers Parker uh, doing a great job hanging right up there in that front group. Uh, we've seen already quite a few uh, lead changes early in this race. Uh, a lot of changes going on out there. We got a, like I said, we've got a group of cars all on the same team working really good together and uh, keeping the car towards the front. Uh, you got some more, Jerry? <laughs> Look at that. I had keys to the door. JDC Tiffany, I got his head set. And boys and girls, we got the number three of Scott Brotherton, 75 Landon Huffman, checking out. Tracy, I'll tell you what's odd about this. He actually left his other three teammates back there. He took off and went with Brotherton, left them back there. So hopefully they can catch back up to him. I tell you, they're doing a great job, those three cars. And uh looked like he jumped out line there, Jerry, just to maybe catch a draft. One of the guys tried to pull him up. But you, when you get up front, sometimes uh, you're better off just to stay with the first and lead and then uh, keep your, at least yourself out there in that top group, and hopefully your teammates can work their own way back up. Oh, I, absolutely. I agree 100%. What he did was smart. He stayed up there with him. But it looks like his three teammates are coming back through that 94, the 83, and the 18, all coming back up there. They're probably going to fly right on past this 41, jump back in with the 75. And I have a feeling, just a sneak and feel, that three is a sitting duck at this point, AJ. Yeah, well, he, you know, the 75 pulled over, let the three go. Um, but they they were hooked up really good. As now the three, is I'm not a setting duck, I'm gonna go ahead and get the spot up. I'm gonna do a switch. I'm gonna push this, try to push this 75 here, and uh, see what happens. And the 75 might have just got hot there. Yeah, yeah I, I think. Are, are they having an overheating problem, uh, AJ? I mean, I we've seen this swap week week in and week out here in Daytona. One car gets overheated, and they got to let the the, got the pusher go back around so he gets some clean air. I believe that's what we're seeing here. And, and after doing two weeks of Daytona, almost guys, this is the first uh, tandem racing I've actually seen. All these cars are broken up in two packs. I haven't seen that since the last batch. Yeah, we got quite a buildup of cars up front now as we got it swapped around. Jeff Addison just took the lead with the 83 of Jet. Jay Horton taking over second, and the 75 of Landon Huffman all pushing the way forward. And we're back to side by side, four cars deep out in front there, AJ. Yeah, uh, John, you were talking about earlier um, you know, about the how long you can draft. It, it's about a lap and a half. You can hook onto a car all the way around this track by a lap and a half. That's when you're creeping up around 300. When you get close to 300, you, be you better get out of line and poke a nose out or something because. Uh, you don't want to be bringing back a broke motor. Yeah, these guys are doing a, they're doing great out here. It's actually, the pack has caught back up to them. And it looks like we got about 22 cars in that pack, guys. And the, most of them are working on being side by side, John. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing quite a few time for names in here, and I'm not quite sure it's the same guys I used to race with. One of them, that nine car, Bill Shogo. I'm almost sure I raced with him back in the Pappy days. And there's another one in here I just seen, and I lost the place of where he went to. But uh, there's quite a few, two or three drivers in here. Chris Wells from Westerfield is another one. I believe he's an old elite sim racing driver uh, named Chris Westerfield. Quite a few uh, faces here I ain't seen in many, many years, guys. Yeah, John, that, uh, that 62 car of Chris Owens, uh, I believe, was he an elite guy? And I believe you're right, too. He's another one with 
Patrick Fogel, Chris Owens, and uh, I think there was a couple more agents. Yeah, I can't remember her name. All great sim, uh, established sim racers here. These guys are doing a spectacular job. First 18 opening laps at Daytona. No cautions, guys. I'm going to tell you what. I am, I am like, thoroughly impressed at this point, Tracy. I'm sitting here looking at the stat list right now. Do you realize that the top 27 cars are within three seconds from each other? I mean, it's, it's quite impressive when you look at the field side-by-side -side stack. They did one heck of a job on this Daytona track. Tell you what, we're getting ready to turn into lap 19, and these guys are doing a great job keeping their cars clean. I haven't seen, heard or seen any cars bouncing off the walls, but I did hear J.D. bounce off the door as he come flying back through and shove Jerry off his chair. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> hey, uh, not quite all the way in the door here yet, but I'll tell you what, me and the computer had a few choice words. I, I really didn't want to go into detail, but uh, ain't fit for kids, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no PG-13 here, huh, J.D.? But so far we got a great race out there, J.D. These guys are running side by side at the moment. But we do have that team of four cars out there, the Sim C team, and they're doing a great job. Got two cars out there leading. One is the 18 of Chad Schilling, and the number two, let's see, uh, where am I? There, I got to move over. It's Jay Horton, the 83 leading with the 94 of Jeff Addison. It's almost to the point where they look like they're switching around to get up there, AJ, and uh, getting each guy to lead a lap or two. Yeah, Tracy, and uh, you got the, uh, the 41 of Thomas Parker and Reggie Jensen. They're they're testing the the high line out, and uh, they got Guy Snyder right behind them, and that nine of Bill showing over who John was talking about earlier. Yeah, we well, got that so four cars from that team down there at the bottom. They're going to be pretty tough to break up them guys and get in between them. So looks like they're going to hug that bottom yellow line all the way around this track. So everybody's going to have to try to get that high side working and get moving but we do know if you get a good run out on the high side you'll be able to get by him as the, the four cars there and that team were able to do earlier in this race as we're heading around and looking at the pack and it's a pretty good pack running up in the front and we got a little bit of smaller pack running back a little ways possibly just saving their cars AJ yeah that Jay Horton Jeff Addison and that 83 and 94 uh, they like to go the high line, so they let the, uh, the, the 18 Chad Schilling and Landon Huffman uh, uh, pull away on the bottom. So I don't, I don't know if that was planned or, uh, you know, they just wanted to uh, wanted to separate. Not really sure. Yeah, it's kind of odd to see them do that move when you can keep all four of your cars together as they're getting past now on that lower line. The three of uh, Scott Brotherton ever to get around. And also the 43 of Doug Roth. Not too sure why they jumped to the high line. Kind of a, they're kind of paying a penalty for it right now as they're kind of moving back a little ways there, AJ. Yeah, Trace, a lot of, a lot of cars hooked up on the high line. Oh, the 83 and the 94, they just, uh, they just turned on the Jets. And uh, I don't know, you know, maybe I'm thinking maybe this, um, this Chad, Hill, Chad Schilling, Lane Huffman, they can uh, ride the brake a little bit, slow down this low line, and let them get back in front of them. That might be the plan uh, to try to get try to get the four cars right back to the front. Yeah, as they're running right now, they're like a giant cork here in the, the water stream as all four of them cars running side by side. Isn't leaving any lanes open for anybody else to make their way around and try to pass that group. So possibly they may be just making themselves a cork up there and... Uh, just race it out between each other for a little while. Yeah, tr yeah, Tracy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, was, <clears throat> I wasn't planning on broadcast tonight. Uh, didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, tell you what, man, I've been really impressed with this group. Uh, to run 23 laps, green, this many cars. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing here. It's a good group of guys. I tell you what, it was a couple of years ago. I didn't know what I was getting into either until John Wesley got me hooked hooked uh, hooked up with this deal. But hey, thanks for stepping in uh, for me there, AJ and uh, Tracy. Good job too. I uh, like I said, me and my computer are having a few choice words here a little bit. So hopefully I can settle down here a little bit. Uh, 
and uh, we'll uh, see what happens there. But hey, I'm riding with Guy Snyder back here in the 27 car. Oh, dips right below the line here, down across the apron. Got to be, uh, got to be uh, something going off that 27 machine, and he's slowing down way off the pace here in that Menards car here. That's going to be number 27 here in 10th position. So uh, not quite sure what's going on with uh, with Guy Snyder here, Tracy. Yeah, but tell you they're still making a great race out there, JD. Uh, those just I've seen several cars go down below that double yellow line here early in the race. A couple of them floated to the back, and uh, just looks like sometimes on the back stretch, some of the guys just I don't know if it's just preservation. Thought they seen a car moving down, but I seen them run down the yellow line as our two leaders still just staying right up front. Chad Schilling in that 75 of Landon Huffman leading this group around with their teammates out there on that outside line and they keep making runs forward and they kind of float back and they move forward and float back so they're almost acting like I said like a plug out there JD. We had a watching, uh, watching our pole sitter back here at 20th position guys uh, running in, uh, in the 23 machine John Gregorio uh, all the way back here in the back. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, part of the strategy here tonight kind of uh, slip backwards here and uh, ride around in the pack and uh, wait for something to happen later on in the race. But uh, Gregorio back here in 21st position, and uh, looks like he's uh, not having any difficulty, guys, but uh, not quite sure uh, why he's uh, dropped back so far. But uh, I tell you what, boys, 26 laps in the books, getting for 80 on the board here tonight, Daytona International Speedway. I tell you, this is one of the best uh, Daytona races I've seen uh, in a couple of weeks here. So uh, having a lot of fun here tonight. Are we looking at a one-top race here, J.D.? I guess I didn't get what they can make it on fuel out there. Maybe A.J., AJ you've got a number on the fuel mileage you can get? Yeah, Jesse Driver was talking earlier. Or, not Jesse. <laughs> I'm thinking about broadcasting <laughs> tomorrow night. Uh, Tracy, the uh, drivers were talking earlier about uh, fuel strategy. Uh, looking probably somewhere 38 to 44 laps, somewhere in there. I think you're going to see the whole pack come in. Uh, yeah, they all won't come down there at one time, but uh, you know they'll they'll roll off probably uh, 10 cars per lap somewhere in there, and uh, yeah, it should be 38, 44, um, not too long from now. Probably about 10 laps, you're gonna start seeing them pit road. That's all right, uh, AJ. I call him Harold sometimes. He answers to that. <laughs> <laughs> all <Or> right, Terry. <laughs> oh, Terry. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, uh, you know, uh, heck of a race going on here. Real Sim Racing League. I'll tell you what, uh, these boys are uh, doing it and uh, doing up good here at the Daytona. And uh, you know what, I uh, want to throw another shout out out there. Viper Technology. If you haven't checked out that game seat yet, uh, let's see. Now, we did this the other night. It's game seat, gaming chair. Uh, i got to get the verbiage all right and everything. But I'll tell you what, ViperSR.com. Get over and take a look at uh, those things. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm talking to uh, Greg and Jason the other day, boys, and I'll tell you, that special, that $289 special plus, uh, I think it's 45 bucks shipping, that's about ready to go away. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, the price goes up, uh, I think, another uh, 100 bucks or something. So you haven't, if you haven't got one yet, get over there and check it out and get one. 289 bucks, and it's got one of them rumble bumping, uh, bumper seats in it. Hook it up to your sound system, surround sound the whole nine yards. And uh, I think uh, Jason, uh, Jason has indicated they're going to throw one of them chairs up for these boys as a season trophy at the end of their season here for Real Sim Racing League. So uh, I'll tell you what, shout out to uh, Viper Technologies for uh, stepping in and stepping up for Real Sim Racing League, boys. Tell you what, that's great. Day. I like, still like to get a picture of uh, our buddy Danny Gabaldon once he gets his seat set up. See him sitting in there as he's one of the winners of the, the seats. But I'm looking at this group out here, J.D., and how well they're running. I'm sure there's several cars that were thinking about hanging in the back and taking a little easy, you know, stay out of trouble. Might be reconsidering their uh, strategy because uh, they say it's looking, so, looking green. And if you're not towards the front here after that first stop, you could be quite a bit of trouble. It looks like uh, Chris West, West Westerfield, he's gone down two laps. Jeff Eden has gone down three. And... Uh, John Abbott, he's still back four laps already, J.D. I think uh, John Abbott, uh, one of the admins here at Real Sim Racing uh, League, uh, not quite sure what's going on with uh, that number 10 machine back there. 
But uh, check it out here in front. Uh, Horton, Schilling, Addison. Uh, I tell you what, they got a foursome going on up here. I love them. Uh, I love them orange and blue cards up there. Pretty smart looking paint job. And uh, I think they're on a team, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've pretty much been discussing that already, JD. Uh, to me, it looks like they're working as a cork. You know, blocking both lines. Got their cars all running good and strong, and their high line with their other two cars can make a run at our top two cars, but. When it comes down to time to pit stop, though, you're going to necessarily need to get down to that bottom line if you want to pit with your team. Yeah, I was just going to, uh, I was just going to say something about that, you know, uh, the transition from the top to the bottom there, and then uh, one more transition from the track to the apron. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, uh, from about 190 miles an hour coming up turn four, pull them reins back, whoa that pony up before you get down to that commit line. I'll tell you, that commit line, the commit line looks like it's about a quarter of a mile away from the windshield. I'll tell you what, uh, you can close the distance pretty darn fast, slowing them babies down. So uh, usually a precaution is going to come out uh, in this kind of a run. Uh, it'll happen right there at the entrance of Pit Road. So to it, green flag pit stop should be coming our way here, boys, in about uh, six laps or so, uh, AJ. So we're looking forward to that uh, here just shortly. And uh, why don't we go ahead and I was, uh, was going to cut away to a commercial, but I think, Tracy, what we'll do is just stay right with the action here and uh, and uh, see uh, what happens uh, with these green flag pit stops. But I'll tell you what, boys, two by two racing from the front to the back. Things are looking pretty decent up here as uh, I'm watching Chad Tracy uh, here in the 14th position back here in the 86 machine. He's riding that high line, keeping the car clean. And I'll tell you what, uh, coming up turn four here, heading down the front stretch. One thing about this track, Tracy, you come down through the trioval, this is the fastest part of the track. I tell you, you get down here to the middle of that trioval, and the AJ, you could probably attest to this. Well, that thing kind of throws you up to the outside like a slingshot, and it takes quite a bit uh, to keep that uh, keep that machine under control and uh, come out the winner here going into turn one. Yeah, JD. Another thing about that trioval, I mean, you're good to bump somebody at the back stretch where you can gain a lot of speeds at that back stretch where you bump, but. Uh, Man, if you put your bumper on somebody on that trial and they're not ready for it and you just bump them the wrong way, uh, all hell can break loose. So. Yeah, and I've seen, uh, we've seen that happen here in Daytona. But I tell you, I think they're, uh, it's like everybody's getting pretty well bunched up here again. And uh, uh, John Hickman Jr. Uh, back there in 32nd. Uh, I got a little group up, Tracy. Uh, Hickman Jr., Bowers, uh, Looks like uh, Stacy Renfro uh, back here in 32nd position, uh, trying to uh, work the draft here a little bit. Both these guys coming up on a slow car. Can't see who the can't see who that is. Uh, not sure if that was uh, Abbott. It looked like John Abbott out here, guys. Uh, way off the pace. Doesn't even look like uh, Tracy. He can even get the speed up. So I'm not sure what's going on with that uh, number 10 car. Yeah, he hit the pit road here quite a bit earlier and. Uh it looked like it just maybe just some repairs got up into the wall, took a little damage. But I'm looking at that group you're talking about, JD. They have closed the gap on our lead group. They were just a few laps ago, 20 seconds behind. So as long as them guys stay in a straight line, they've been able to close the gap, and they're down to 14 seconds behind our lead group. And they're going to want to continuously make up that time, as this is really looking like a green, a green, busy, a green race, where uh, we're not getting too many cautions. Matter of fact, that front group has just really gained in size, and uh, I'm going to try to see how many cars are in this group right now, JD, JD, but it keeps getting larger and larger as we get closer and closer to the pit stop. It looks like the 54, 56 car Tyler Price is almost at the tail end of this group, and he's running 27. Yeah, and I'm uh, you know, playing around with my monitor here. I'm looking out the windshield of Chris, Chris Westerfield up here. Uh, he's in uh, 36th position, and uh, looking at that elite group out there in front of him. And I'll tell you what, uh, kind of waiting for that top, uh, that upper line up there. Start uh, start peeling off and uh, start making a hole down there on the bottom. Try to get him. We've got uh, pit stops. It looks like they're coming up here in about uh, possibly four laps here, guys. So these guys got to be thinking about that. Of course, guys on the bottom, uh, you know, do you make a hole uh, for these guys on the top or you just uh, keep, keep your uh, foot in it and, uh, hey, best of luck, uh, you know, take your own shot, you know, try to get down to the bottom. I mean, how, you know, what do you do in that case, JJ? Yeah, it's um, probably right now a lot of it's uh, team communication when you want to pit. Um, 
if I'm in if I'm in the front here, probably uh, you know, might want you know if you're clear in the front, you might want to wait, you might want to wait a little bit. But uh, if you're in the back, I would say go ahead. And if you got drafting partners, come in with, with a little bit of team communication. Uh, come on in now. That way, uh, that way you can get drafted up and uh, hopefully pass some of these guys that uh, the bigger group when they check up, they could be the ones that uh, that could be the slowest coming up at red. So. Bet uh, Keith Brooks, uh, Keith Brooks Jr. back here in 18th position. Uh, he's kind of the tail end of this uh, line up here now. Actually, uh, actually, it's actually building here, Tracy. As I watch these guys start starting to line up there on the bottom, and uh, looks like uh, it's like this top group up here is starting to make a hole uh, here a little bit for these guys in back, but they still got a gaggle of cars up on the top line there, up in the front. It's like uh, the four car, the uh, foursome up here. Huffman, uh, Chilling, Addison, and these guys up here finally uh, cut down the bottom. They must be thinking about uh, pit stops here coming up as it uh, looks like uh, the 44. Oh, almost, oh, almost contact oh, with oh, Horton oh. up here in the front with the 44. They got a race the to the lead. Inside, guys. Tell you a great leader. race to the lead. The 44 dove underneath that Duke are uh, kind of left him out there by himself, was able to take the lead, pushing them three wide. Great job by Rob boiling as he's working his way around but you're right them that four car team it almost looks like they slowed that bottom line up just a little bit allowing their teammates to get out there so you're getting really really close to pit stops that we just turned uh lap 39 so we're working on lap 40 right now jd you okay, know what uh you know congratulations to rob bowling at new leader out here at daytona of course the bonus points are going to mean everything at the end of the year guys so uh but uh, that was a close call with uh, Jay Horton out here coming underneath that two car. But you're absolutely right, Tracy. Green flag pit stops uh, got the look to it right now. Keep an eye on pit road down here as uh, we get uh, set for uh, green flag pit stops. This may be a one-stop shot uh, here, guys. As uh, 80 laps on the book, so uh, we're looking out uh, for that. But uh, you know, uh, you know, when that uh, when that red light comes on the dash, AJ, you know, uh, how many laps can you go here? Before you finally start running up fumes and suck that tank dry. JD probably the most probably about 47 laps. I think you're going to see a lot of these drivers. They're going to come down. Um, they're probably going to trim their fuel the, best, the closest they can to make it finish. Uh, just try to get the, you know the quickest time off pit road. But they're going to come down. They're going to take right side tires, send them back out. Um, probably mostly everybody in the field. There is, you know, both 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 the tires wear here in these Cup cars, and uh, you know. For the extra, for the better grip, you want the right side tires. So, two tire stops probably for everybody, and uh, just trimming the fuel just enough to make it be in. As that four car tando, um, yeah, Jay Horton, uh, Jeff Addison, uh, Chad Schilling, all them guys are coming down the pit road a whole bunch. All right, green flag pit stops underway. We'll let the AJ. Uh AJ, keep an eye on that happening down on pit road, guys. But uh, to it, green flag pit stops coming our way here as uh, these guys make their way down onto the apron and uh, Tracy we've got a bunch of them uh, coming off of uh, turn two here coming back up on the track so green flag pit stops underway here at Daytona with Real Sim Racing League guys. Yeah that group just entering back on the track there JD looks like they got split up quite a by quite a bit as they're actually getting past the 0007 and we got another car of the 7 hitting pit road just getting back up to speed, and we got another car entering pit road. JD, oh, getting slipped, slipped a little bit. Able to get that car slowed down. I'm, I'm gonna guess a uh, 98 car just entered pit road, going fast as we got cars spinning in pit road. All right, sounds this. like uh, we got some action going down there on pit road, guys. Let's see if we can't. Uh 70 car uh, Jason Elrod uh, spinning out down here on pit road uh, doesn't look like he has any damage Tracy he works himself back up through the grass up on pit road here into his box that's going to set him back uh, quite a ways and also the 77 car of uh, Stacy Renfro he uh, got some damage on that JD on his right rear of his car it was three cars that got together entering pit road one guy got on the brakes and uh, just uh, couldn't hold on to the back end, came around and spin into the other two cars. But I was looking at one car was actually speeding entering Pet Road, JD. So I'll be looking for him to be coming back in. All 
All right, and I'll tell you what, I'm sitting here watching Joey Gatina down here. Uh, he was in the fifth position, being shown in fifth position. He's in that 14 off of the Eco car down here. And I'll tell you what, Gatina looks like a couple of new shoes and a bucket of oats for him. Back out uh, on the track he goes as he tries to hustle that 14 machine out to the front here. But uh, in the meantime, Reggie, I'm showing Reggie Jensen as our leader right now, Chalice Parker. Uh, Hayes in that 69 car, Eric Arnold uh, in the uh, top five with Joey Gatina. So pit stops underway here at Daytona, boys. It'll be a few laps here. Things will cycle out, and we'll go back down through the field with you for you. But uh, as the uh, as green flag pit stops start winding down here, why don't we go ahead and step away? We'll take a real quick commercial break. Hey, you're watching live Cowboy ETV live. It's the only choice. Daytona International Speedway, real sim racing league. Go wander off. We'll be right back. All right, we are back live. Welcome to Daytona Speedway. I tell you what, green flag pit stops that have just taken place, guys. So I tell you what, it's four new shoes and a bucket of oats for everybody out here. Chad Cole being shown your leader out here, Guy Snyder. Landon Huffman, Chad Schilling, Scott Brotherton uh, is our top five up here. And I tell you what, uh, looks like uh, looks like uh, Chad Schilling and Landon Huffman got uh, hooked up here. That's going to be that 75 and 18 car. I suppose they're on the same team. I would say so. Pretty smart looking paint job that here, boys. But I'll tell you what, pit stops always throw a mix into the game here. And so we've got a couple of uh, new leaders up here uh, that uh, we haven't seen up here before. Uh, Guy Snyder and Chad Cole. So I'll tell you what, uh, bonus points mean everything in a points race. So, uh, you know, a lot of these guys are looking to at least at least lead a lap here at Daytona. But, uh, guys, we got another group back here, your pole sitter in the uh, 13th uh, position. In that 23 car, uh, they're about uh, they're about 10 seconds off the pace here. Now there's a whole group of them back here. They're about three seconds behind uh, another group of four, and then uh, looks like uh, AJ. These guys kind of split off into uh, different groups here. But if they stay together, work together, stay in that line together, there's a good chance they could close the distance on that lead group of them. Yeah, JD. Here's a bigger group of them, and uh, you know. There's still 50 laps left, or, yeah, there's 30 laps left, my, my bad, uh, there's 30 laps left, there's still plenty of time for that group to, um, to get, to get it rolling here, uh, there's only, the lead group right now is only, uh, five drivers, so, six drivers, there's six drivers in this group, uh, but it looks like right now they're content on staying in line, so, that's not good news. For that for that group behind them, but uh, there's still time for them to make up make up time. A good two-car tandem draft back there can pull up to this group and uh, 
I see two of them right now getting out in the high line. That's the three of uh, Scott Brotherton and, and the 83 of Jay Hurton. You bet. And I'll tell you what, uh, you know, when these guys get split up in a group like this and uh, get behind, uh, I tell you, they got to work together and uh, try to get up there. But uh, Tony Cam is back here to 37th for this guy's 91 car of Jeff Eden down here on uh, the apron coming out of the pits there. Not quite sure what's going on with uh, Eaton's car here, but he's uh, completely off the pace, guys. Six laps down, but uh, Chris Beck uh, have, having some problems tonight, too, in a 38th position, that 34 machine. John Abbott, of course, has been down. Uh, Bill Schoonover, who's, uh, I believe, a substitute. Uh, uh, Jimmy North is substituting for Bill Schoonover in that number nine machine, a couple of laps down. Chris Westerfield is one lap down. Stacy Renfro. David Lanza also lapped down, and I'll tell you what, uh, if they get to the wave rounds here tonight, David Lanza, he's the first car lap down in that 33 machine, so uh, he may be the lucky one here tonight. But in the meantime, up ahead of them, uh, you know, I've been talking about it, they're split up here in about uh, two, three different groups here from about uh, five seconds off the lead all the way back to about 12 seconds off the lead. But let's talk about the leaders up here. They're pretty much running by themselves, guys. Uh, the next group, Scott Brotherton, they're about five seconds off watching these uh, watching these times. And uh, these two guys up here, uh, Chad Cole and the guy Snyder, actually gaining uh, on that uh, group in back of them. So uh, they're, uh, they're uh, laying them down here uh, pretty good, uh, Tracy. Yeah, I've been watching that, J.D. They start out with about a four-second lead on that next pack, and they've pushed that out to 5.8 seconds, so gaining 1.7 seconds in about three laps, J.D., and I've also been watching them. They've been making the switch over, and they're still gaining time on that next pack back. So then the second pack, the guys in third and fourth, they're out there racing side by side in that group. And I do believe that's what's helping them pull away. They needed to get in a straight line and catch up to them leaders running side by side is actually slowing that group down. You bet. I'm uh, back here in uh, sixth position uh, looking at uh, Greg Netherwood just packed back here. Doug Roth, Scott Brotherton, all these guys back here and uh, two by two, the uh, five and a four three up on the top side. You got the three and the uh, eight, the, or, uh, that's the uh, 83 down here on the bottom uh, trying to hook it up. But, uh, you know, 18 trying to catch up uh, up there on the top. And, you know, just kind of wonder why these guys, now here they go. See, they were, they were, uh, Looking, looking like they were two by two, kind of racing each other, but now they're dropping down in the line and uh, trying to get hooked up here, get that train going, see if they can't get anywhere. But the 18 uh, catching up with his uh, teammate up here in that 75 machine, Landon Huffman, as they try to close the distance on the leaders up here at uh, Daytona. At the moment, they're hurting, hurting themselves, J.D. They keep losing time to those front two cars squabbling over the fourth and fifth position. These guys should be hooking up and saying, hey, let's not worry about this now. Let's worry about catching up that lead group. Oh, that was so we've all got. Bottom. Yeah, I see that, J.D. You know, let's worry about getting up there to the leaders, and uh, then we'll start fighting positions. Right now, we're just losing time. Uh, so hopefully these guys will hook together. But no, looks like they're still trying to fight over third position, J.D. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, I saw that one coming. Uh, but it's like, uh, I, don't, I want to say that was Doug Roth down there on the 43 machine, but uh, I'd have to go back and look at it. But almost tangling with uh, uh, with another car down there uh, on the inside lane. But uh, I tell you what, no better racing here tonight than what I've seen here in a long time. And these boys could put it up. Real Sim Racing League. Check them out, realsimracing.com. Uh, and uh, hook up with uh, Joey and, uh, and John over here. A couple of uh, pretty good guys. And I uh, want to give another shout out, of course, to our sponsor. Viper Technologies. They're not uh, with us tonight. I know Jason and Greg taking the night off here tonight, but I'll tell you what, they have thrown out there. One of the Viper 600 SR uh, gaming seats out here. Uh, they're throwing it up for the uh, season champion here at Real Sim Racing League. So looking forward to that. Check it out. ViperSR.com, dude. I'll tell you, you got them bumper thumper seats, and uh, maybe I got to think, think of another name or something, but uh, I like that bumper thumping. Uh, surround sound, the whole nine yards, and uh, ViperSR.com. Check it out over there, guys. 289 bucks plus shipping. Dude, they only weigh about 50 pounds. You can haul them all over the house. And 
uh, and set it up. But in the meantime, out here on the track, guys, I tell you, I, I, this is about the best uh, racing I've ever seen here at Daytona in, a, in about a week. But uh, as things are going out here, Jack Cole still holding down the front up here with Guy Snyder, and they're pretty much walking away from everybody else. I tell you what, teamwork, it's all about teamwork. But uh, what happens to that team when it comes down to uh, lap 79, Tracy? Well, the gap they're getting, they're not going to worry too much about it. They'll race it out there on their own at the end. They're looking at they're almost a 10-second lead here, J.D. Since we stopped at the pits, back at lap 41, this back group chasing them down. Like I said, they're too busy racing each other that they're losing time on that lead group. As a matter of fact, that lead group is just going to slowly pull away at their race to lose at this moment. And I'm sure they're up there leading, thinking, I hope a caution don't come out. I hope a caution come, don't come out, because they're doing a great job getting away from this group. Matter of fact, that big pack that we were talking about, about six cars, looks like it's about, uh, I don't know, 15 cars now, J.D.? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm riding along here uh, in 16th position back here to the 88 car of Adam Roberts. Uh, just kind of tagging along back here behind all these others in the front. And uh, just kind of making use of that draft up there. Right it. This pack is growing. It's getting bigger as uh, we got uh, double file racing up here, guys. And I tell you, uh, uh, looks like uh, they're working hard trying to get that distance closed up there. Now, here's the deal here, boys. You know, uh, the heavier the line, the slower it is. So, uh, you know, if you can break away uh, like, uh, like our leaders have, Tracy, that's what it's all about. You know, two cars, a lighter load, and uh, a lot faster. So uh, the more cars, the heavier the line is, and the more difficult it is to move it through the air. But uh, I tell you what, these boys are working it and uh, trying to get uh, every position they can here. That's what, it, uh, that's what it's all about. 57 laps in the book here at Daytona. I'll tell you what, why don't we go ahead and step away. We'll take a commercial break. You're watching it live, Cowboy. It's the only way to do it right here on ETV Live. So, hey, don't wander off. We'll be right back. Hey, dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. And partnered with Nuff World Simulation Gaming, check out the HD Radio Network's Nuff Radio with Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. And we are back. I'll tell you what, I heard that screen door open and close back there behind us in the booth here. And guess who walks in? Rick Law Dog Donathan. He's been filling in for Tracy Robinson. Tracy having to uh, leave and uh, go take care of business, but I'll tell you what. Uh, Rick, this is about the best Daytona race I have ever witnessed out here. We had uh, roughly uh, 40, I think uh, 40 some cars, 38 cars uh, start the uh, race tonight, and they're all still with us. I tell you what, uh, pit stops have happened here about uh, oh 20 laps or so, a little, little less than 20 laps ago, and this looks like uh, it may be a one-stop shot here tonight. Uh, and I tell you, I'm watching uh, Greg Netherwood back here in sixth position. In that five machine, he's uh, kind of leading that uh, that top line up here with this. Uh, 
caught up in the leaders up there. I tell you, they were slicing and dicing up here. Oh, it was a 14 takes a piece of the wall coming off a of turn four up here right behind that Netherwood. That's Joey Gatina running around here. Uh, Joey's uh, one of the admins over here at uh, Real Sim Racing League. But I tell you what, uh, this is the best Daytona race I've ever seen in a long, long time. I tell you what, JD, I've been watching this race. Uh, you know, I had to borrow JD's horse and buggy again, but it's the most sophisticated horse and buggy ride you'll ever see. He's got one of those little radios that you push the button in and the little TV screen comes out. I tuned in over here to ETVLive.net, started watching the race, and man, what a heck of a race I've seen so far. But JD, You've definitely got to trade the horses in. It caused me to be late again tonight. All right, three wide coming off turn, turn four here, guys. Oh, almost a 43 car, almost getting a piece of the wall there, but three, three wide as they hustle to the front. Wow. Looks like, uh, looks like the 75 machine up here with, uh, I want to say that's the 23, uh, the 23 of uh, John Gregorio up here, guys. Taking a three wide there just for a minute. There's still three wide back here. It's a five machine up here in the center of the five trying to put something together and uh, get the job done. But I tell you what, things are settling down here a little bit going down the back stretch. But uh, I tell you, three wide going into turn three down here, guys. Tell you what, I was watching uh, Chad Cole and Guy Snyder running up here in the front. And uh, tell you, J.D., it looks like they've just smoked the field. It looks like uh, uh, John... Gregorio is about 11, almost 12 seconds behind the second place of Chad Cole. And uh, those guys are working very good with each other up here. Got into some lap traffic. And uh, these guys are just, they're, they're hanging on to each other, uh, switching back and forth. Good, uh, uh, good craftsmanship there as far as working with each other. All right, and uh, I'm hearing... Uh I'm hearing uh, back here a uh, couple of couple of uh, things happening back on the track. Uh, John, did you uh, catch something back here? All right, let's see if we can't uh, can't pull it up. But uh, had a little bit a little, little bit of action back here. I tell you, these guys are slicing and dicing up here, guys. As uh, John uh, John's got it pulled back up on the e wine. Let's check that one out. It looks like the seven car. He's gonna get out of shape here, get on the outside wall, I'm not sure if he's going to get help or not, he's going to hit that outside wall guys, he's going to slide through the infield right through three wide guys, I don't know how he made it through here, barely going to tap, I believe that's the 94 machine there, he's going to shove the uh, 46 down <laughs> below the apron guys, and this 7 car is going to take a big slide down pit road. Wow. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, uh, this thing's winding down. 65 laps in the books, and we're tangling down here, going down the back to this guy's looking for three wide. I tell you, they're starting to push the envelope here, Tracy and uh, AJ, as uh, the 62 machine. Chris Owen looking for uh, looking for a spot to thread the needle. You get the five up on the outside, 69 right in front of them. But I tell you what, slicing and dicing here, coming down the front stretch, trying to close the distance on the leaders up there. In the meantime, the, the leaders have got almost a 12 second, almost a 13 second lead, dude. Let me tell you something, uh, these boys are pouring the coal to the boiler, trying to get these hooked up. As uh, the action's happening back here, about 15th place, uh, uh, Rick. Absolutely, JD. That it was only maybe a lap and a half ago. They only had a 12-second lead on the rest of the pack, almost gaining another second, almost in a lap and a half on that. Oh, so those oh. guys are rolling. Is 62 going around. 62 caution coming out, guys. 62 car going around here. That's going to be Chris Owens, guys. Contact with another car. He's, can't, looks like the 69 car. Uh, looks like the 69 car, Joseph Hayes, guys, drifting up into the 62 of uh, Chris Owens and uh, door slamming him a good one and spinning that uh, 62 machine out for an e-ticket ride, guys. I'll tell you what, first caution here at Daytona. Let's throw it on down to Magic Fingers, John the Bad Boy Wesley. We've got to pick up on the e-wine machine. Now, see what happens. These guys are really starting to take chances there in the closing lap. We've got about 15 laps to go in this race. And they push it three wide. They just get tangled up together. 69 is going to slide through the grass, come back up, and boy, he, he basically saved it. Didn't get into anything, I don't believe. Tell you what, JD, I was taking a look at that replay as well, and I'll tell you, the way this draft works out here, the 69 and the 62 got in with each other right there. Uh, that that uh, looks like that's the, the 62. When he came up on the passenger side, it just sucked in that 69 to the right and caused that, that uh, crash there. 
event, and uh, I think uh, we've got a couple of more cars involved too. In fact, a 14 car back end gets completely lifted off the ground. Let's see if I can't. Uh, trying to scroll through these cars here, but uh, it's actually going to involve uh, quite a few cars. 43 car uh, trying to get on the binders and uh, slides right under the uh, 14 machine, Joey Catina, and they get out of shape down here. So I'll tell you what, the 43 and 62 taking uh, taking a pretty good beating here along with that 14 machine. So first caution of the night coming out here at Daytona, guys. Hey, J.D., we got coming down the pit road, we got uh, Joey Catina, man. He's got a lot of front, uh, right front damage. So does that... Uh 62 of Chris Owens. He's got right front damage as well. Uh, the 69 car looks to be okay. I think think the teams could probably uh, pull the fenders out on that, and it'll probably be back up to speed. But uh, that's that's the latest from down here on pit road. All right. I know what? Uh, get the uh, bear bond out and the, and the uh, jackhammers and the uh, ball peen hammers. Going to get some sheet metal to get straightened out down here. Tell you what, 67 laps in the books. This thing is winding down. 80 laps on the board here tonight for Real Sim Racing League at Daytona and National Speedway. This is race number one of a full season of cup racing with these boys. And I'll tell you what, the ETV Live looking to broadcast every single one of them for them on Monday nights right here. Uh, live, so uh, I tell you what, uh, having a blast out here with these boys. Green flag all the way up here to about the lap 66. First caution of the night coming out. Still got to hand it to these guys, but this is going to be a whole new ball game for Gry Snyder and Chad Cole. That's right, JD. And you know they almost had a 13-second lead on the rest of that pack there, and bowling down to probably the last 10 laps of the race. Everybody's going to be bundled up. Everybody's going to be want to go shooting for the front. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a heck of a race down to the last few laps of this thing. You bet. I'll tell you what, uh, why don't we go ahead and step away. We'll take a commercial break, bring you back to the green flag. You're watching live ETV Live Cowboy, Daytona International Speedway, Real Sim Racing League. Don't wander off. We'll be right back. TV Live. I'll tell you what, this is the first broadcast for Sim Racing League, uh, Real Sim Racing League. For race number one here, boys, uh, Daytona International Speedway working our first caution here, the 62 and the 69 uh, making uh, contact. Of course, the 14 involved, the 42, I believe, was also involved in that. But uh, i tell you what, uh, Bear Bond coming out down around Pit Road, and uh, i tell you, uh, not a whole lot of takers uh, down Pit Road, guys, so uh, that's going to set up a whole new scenario up here. Remember, Guy Snyder, Chad Cole up here in the lead had almost a 13, almost 14 second lead over uh, everybody else. But uh, new game plan in place. I'm sure spotters and uh, crew chiefs are working the radios pretty hard up there. Why don't we uh, see if we can't get a hold of them, uh, one of them. 
That's right, JD. And I tell you what, uh, you know, you got Guy Snyder up there uh, sitting on the the front row. It is uh, out outside is Chad Cole driving the number seventeen, and uh, caught some radio chatter there. I heard something about Guy Snyder said that Chad Cole was my life partner. So we're going to find that out here with him. We get ready to break down these last few laps. So uh, it's going to be interesting. You bet. I'll tell you what, I believe we're going to get the one to go uh, this time by. The lights will go off on the pace car, but I'll tell you what, uh, I believe we've got uh, Joey James on the radio down here. Uh, Joey, is J.D. up in the booth, bud? You got a copy? Uh, yeah, Tim. Yeah. Hey, guy, uh, working, uh, working caution number one here, uh, and I see uh, uh, everything uh, going pretty smooth down here tonight. Uh, what's your game plan from here on out? Uh, push, push, push. I hope we have an opening. Um, I've been up front most of the night, but um, our, I say my up front about 10th or 15th. We just can't go anywhere. It stalls out, but uh, it's been a good race. You know, I got took out or got hit in that last one. I had 25 seconds to repair, but I can't say enough. I've worked my tail off, uh, and I'm 23rd tonight. These guys are amazing, and uh, I don't know. I wish we could extend the race a little bit. Yeah, you bet. I'll tell you what, one of the better races I've seen here at Daytona. Hats off to you boys here at Real Sim Racing League. No better group out here at Daytona tonight. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, uh, 71 laps in the books, guy. Yeah, there's a lot of racing left to go, and uh, good luck to you, and thanks for talking to us. Yeah. All right, uh, Joey James uh, out there in the 14 machine. Now, he's uh, he got caught up in that wreck here back on lap 66, so a little bit damaged to his machine. See if he can't get, get that thing up a few more positions. But on the restart, Guy Snyder is going to be picking it up this time. He's got Chad Cole, uh, Gregorio. Uh, he's got Chalmers Parker. Now, Gregorio uh, sitting up here in third, finally made it back to the front, guys. Gregorio absolutely going backwards uh, after the start of the race. Spent the better part of uh, the night uh, mixed up in the middle of the field. But I'll tell you what, uh, through pit stop strategy, and, of course, uh, one coming out here on uh, lap 66, back up in the top five. And uh, Chalmers Parker and Tyler Price making up your top five here as the pace car is going to be pulling off down pit road here, make that sharp left-hand turn. And we should be back to green flag racing. I tell you what, this thing is absolutely closing in on us uh, there, Rick. So uh, looking for an exciting start as the pace car pulls off. Suck them belts up one more time. And uh, we are off green flag racing again here at Daytona, guys, as we get ready to wind this thing down. That's right, A.D., and Green Flag is out, and it uh, looks like Chad Cole just fell right in behind Guy Snyder. And uh, look for uh, John Gregorio uh, and, and Ch Chalmers Parker to team up as they're going to go up on the outside here and try to get a good run coming off of four down the backstretch, J.D., you bet. I tell you, I tell you the, the threat is on a 23 machine up here, uh, Gregorio, and he's got uh, Tyler Price, uh, who uh, started outside of Gregorio here tonight. I tell you what, they're looking for a make a run on uh, Snyder and Cole up here in the front. 72 laps in the book there, guys. Set for 88 more laps to go here as this thing starts winding down. So I'll tell you what, slicing and dicing, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. We already had one already. I'll tell you what, they're cutting them ponies loose Rick, and letting Rick. them ride. Oh, and we've got uh, caution, caution coming out here again, guys, as we cycle around and try to pick it up. I'm hearing a car, the car, uh, car 91 here, guys. Looks like uh, the uh, looks like the 83 uh, kind of cut down on the 41. Trying to get the names on those right now, JD. 83 took a heck of a hit to the wall head on. All right, so I try to roll my uh, roll my monitor back here a little bit and uh, see what this is go what's going on back here. All right, then uh, here, John, the magic fingered whistling has got it down around the e-wine machine. Let's see if we see what happens here, guys. He's gonna. I think you're gonna see him rolling on his lid. I'm not quite sure how he got there, though. That's the tricky part. It looks like a car just came across his nose. Wow, and he's stuck in the outside wall, guys. Tell you what, he took one heck of a hit there, uh, hitting that wall straight ahead, and. Uh, don't know if uh, if the draft played a part in that JD or not. Those guys were pretty close coming through that dog leg there, and uh, once they connected, that was it. It was all over, and uh, he hit hit on into that wall. 
All right, second caution of the night. And like I said, it's, it's not a matter of uh, if it comes out. It's just a matter of when it happens. As uh, caution number two here at Daytona uh, International Speedway. But uh, I'll tell you something, boys. Hey, you know, one more time, uh, get out of here with a couple of cautions here tonight. That'll be a good thing. Some fantastic racing we have been watching all night long here as these guys mix it up here. And I'll tell you, uh, guys like uh, Joseph Hayes, Eric Arnold, Cameron Manis out here, Logan Bunning, John Higman Jr. I tell you, these guys have been putting on a fantastic show here at Daytona. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, working the caution number two here, why don't we go ahead and step away and uh, we'll take uh, one more commercial break here and uh, we'll try to bring you the green flag uh, uh, the checkered flag here when we come back so uh, hey sit tight cowboy don't be wandering off we'll be right back drop down before the line all right and we are back live and i'll tell you what uh you know we've been talking about guy snyder and chad cole uh, out here had about a 14 second lead uh, before that uh, first pit stop or first pit stop first uh, yellow flag back on lap 66 but uh we've got uh guy snyder on the radio up here uh guys this is jd up in the booth you copy yeah i got you Hey, but, uh, you know, a heck of a run uh, you and uh, Cole putting on out there, but uh, through the uh, yellow flags, your caution's coming out a couple of times. Whole new game plan. Uh, what's your strategy from here on out? Uh, basically, we just want to get lined up. I mean, however we can do it. Uh, that last um, grease start, I mean, we couldn't have scripted it any better. But uh, that first yellow, actually, I, I looked down and saw that we had such a huge lead, and I was like, oh, man, you know, I wish that hadn't, hadn't came out. And then uh, crew chief radioed in and said uh, we needed to save gas on the under the yellow. So it kind of was a like a godsend. You bet. i tell you what, I know you started out there in the fifth row, and uh, been doing a fantastic job hanging out in the top ten, top five pretty much all night long. Cole starting out uh, in row 16, but uh, is that the plan for you two to stay hooked up uh, until the end of this thing? Actually, I thought it was going to be more of a crapshoot and uh, that we wouldn't be able to find each other and, you know, through yellows and stuff, maybe we would get to work together. But uh, we were downplaying teamwork all all night because, uh, like I said, I just didn't think it was going to pan out the way it did. And, and uh, right before when I saw we were going to have green flag pit stops, I dropped back for him and we found each other. And the uh, best thing I could have done, really. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, I hear your crew chief uh, hollering in the background and then uh, trying to work you over down there. I'll tell you what, we're going to cut you loose. Thanks for joining us up here, and uh, good luck tonight, my friend. Oh, thanks a lot, man. All right, that's that guy Snyder uh, in the uh, 27 machine up there. I'll tell you what, uh, him and Chad Cole got it hooked up, Tracy, and uh, we're pretty much leading the pack, but it's a whole new game now as uh, we still got the lights on the pace car, but uh, this might be a good time to uh, throw a shout-out out there for ETV, ETV Live. 
hey, if you want to watch this thing again, you can here in a couple of hours, etv-eplay.net. That's where it's at, cowboy. I'll tell you what, uh, get yourself some corn dogs and Coronas. You can download these uh, races, burn them off onto a DVD, and have yourself an ETV Live party. Corn dogs and Coronas, that's right. And I'll tell you what, get your in-laws, your outlaws, your neighbors, your kids, your aunts and uncles, get them all over there. Have some fun watching these ePlays, etv-eplay.net. Hey, and the best thing about it, high res, and they're all free. But I'll tell you what, uh, another thing we want to mention here, too, is that ETV Live sponsor, Viper Technologies, throwing out one of them game seats for the season champion here at Real Sim Racing League. And I'll tell you, awful kind of those guys, Jason and Greg over there, Viper Technologies. Check them out, ViperSR.com, Rick. And that's right, J.D., and I tell you what, those things have got that extra vibrating seat in it that uh, just that alone is worth the price to pay for one of those seats out there, J.D. I tell you, I've heard, uh, heard a lot of good things about this thing and uh, just dying to get one back here at the buffet table so that way we can shake off a few pounds after eating those good old ribs back here. <laughs> tell you what, uh, you know, if nothing else, uh, that buffet that we have here. I mean, you know, we, we get transported to the track in a 1952 school bus that's been, uh, you know, the windows are all boarded up with plywood and, of course, looks like a paisley-looking paint job with uh, finger paint on the outside. And of course, uh, somebody's got, uh, I, think, I don't know if they use crayon or whatever they use, ETV Live, on the back of it. But then, uh, you know, we come up here in the booth, got this rusty old screen door on the back with the buffet table. Dude, it looks like, you'd, you know, something you'd find at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. But uh, I tell you what, another shout-out we need to give, HD Radio Network. I tell you, they finally got my country western station up and running. I got a few little bugs they're trying to work out of it. But I tell you what, thanks to Phil over there in the HD Radio Network, boys. HD Radio Network, and they provide ETV Live with the uh, pre-race entertainment. So rock your brains out, cowboy, and uh, enjoy the music, hdradionetwork.com. Pace car uh, coming off of turn four here, guys. Going to take that sharp left turn, hit on down pit road. That's the signal for a guy Snyder to suck them belts up one more time as we get ready to finish this thing. 77 laps in the books. There's just a couple of them left here at Daytona. And I'll tell you what, I wonder if, if he's nervous as uh, the flag man's up. Green flag is out, and we are off running final laps here at Daytona. Oh, I tell you what, J.D., Chad Cole didn't get such a great takeoff that time, and uh, Landon Huffman almost took the second-place position away from him, but it looks like Chad finally got the foot back into the gas. He's getting back up on Guy Snyder's bumper and getting in that line like Guy said that they were trying to do, and uh, Landon Huffman just going to fall right in behind Ooh. him in that third-place position. All right, Tyler Price and uh, looks like uh, Tyler Price and uh, John Gregorio. John Gregorio started on the pole here. Here's your front runners right here, guys. That's their plan. Get up there on the outside, and they're going to try to hoof it past uh, past uh, Cole and Snyder up here. Ah, can't make it off of off of the uh, turn here. So back to the bottom they go. Tell you what, uh, they'll probably give it another shot when they come back around. But uh, Snyder and Cole hooked up again, and they are starting to separate themselves from Huffman and, uh, and the rest of the back here, guys. That's right, and John Gregorio and Tyler Price has hooked up as well, J.D., and uh, Landon Huffman still trying to hang on back there on that back bumper of uh, Tyler Price, but those guys are working hard and getting a good run coming out of four on the back stretch, and uh, looks like those guys are getting ready to try to make a move on the outside. Squeezing them down here. I'll tell you what, taking advantage of that side draft down here as the 23 machine breaks off, goes to the outside, can't get the job done. Tyler Price stays put down here on the bottom. In the meantime, guys, on our Chad Cole on their way to the front here. I'll tell you what, uh, one more lap around, or uh, I believe we've got one more lap around here, guys, is uh, Tyler Price and John Gregorio trying to put something together, can't do it. And the leaders, uh, Guy Snyder and Chad Cole, are gaining distance on them, guys, almost a half a second here. Uh, Gregorio about four tenths off with Tyler Price Huffman right on their tail trying to push everything he's worth. Looks like they're closing the distance coming off of uh, the turn here, boys. But I'll tell you what, having a hard time uh, getting past them. One more shot here as they break for the outside. Coming down the back stretch, side draft, making it work for them. Now they're gaining on them. Going to get that slingshot coming off turn four here and back down the front stretch one more time. I tell you, it's going to be a race to the finish. Coming out of four, Gregorio on the outside. Oh, oh 75 contact. in contact. contact. 
Oh, and I think this is going to finish the race, guys. It's going to finish under caution here as they all go piling into each other at the finish line. Holy oh. smoke. Ooh, I tell you what, uh, if you talk about a big one, that was the big one right there, J.D. I tell you what, tough competition coming out of turn four. One small little hit just created the big one here today. Wow. That, that has got to be a record-setting wreck, guys. I swear, I'm pulling it back one more time here, watching them come off of turn four, and holy cow, the 17 goes for an e-ticket ride. Holy smoke. I'll tell you what, that's worth about six or seven replays. John, <laughs> let's pull it back one more time for the fans. Guys, I think the only two cars that wasn't involved in this was our two leaders. <laughs> There had to, the whole field had to be involved in this. 75 is going to come back up the track. Worst thing you can do is get in that grass. There's already a car airborne up on the track, the four car, the three car, the I believe that's the 40 car. Wow, there is cars rolling everywhere here at Daytona Speedway, and there's cars still rolling, guys. Wow. Wow. All right, Guy Snyder track, uh, Chad Tracy hook it up for the win. John Gregorio coming home in third. I tell you what, what a night here at Daytona. And I guess if there's uh, if there's an exciting way to finish the race, I guess this could go down in the record books. Absolutely. I'm going back and look at this replay. Chad Tracy came through that field there, up in the middle, untouched, didn't have any cars to worry about, just drove straight ahead and actually beat John Gregorio across the finish line for a second place finish, J.D. And we're talking that John Gregorio went across the start and finish line sideways and Chad Tracy overtook that position by maybe a wheel. That was it. Unbelievable finish here at Daytona, guys. I'll tell you what. After 80 laps of pristine racing, I'll tell you just a couple of cautions, uh, you know, and really, uh, you know, you're looking for that big one to come out. We had the first one on lap 66. Thought that might be it, but only a couple of cars involved. And then, uh, of course, the one on lap 72 with the uh, 14 and the 42 and the 69 and a couple others. But uh, tell you what, the big one did not happen until it uh, until the leaders crossed the start finish line. And I tell you, what, it was game over. E ticket rides by about a dozen of them here at Daytona. But I tell you what, uh, Guy Snyder and Chad Tracy, I tell you, you know, working hard uh, the last part of the race uh, had that huge lead. Uh, the uh, last pit, uh, the last caution on lap 72 brought them all back together again. I tell you what, fantastic show uh, that they put on here at Daytona. So uh, I tell you, we're going to go ahead and step away. We're going to take a couple of commercial breaks. We're going to get ready for the post-race show here at Daytona. So sit tight, cowboy. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, race fans. I'll tell you what, what a night here at Daytona International Speedway Real Sim Racing League. Race number one with a, for a season of racing to come here on ETV Live. And I'll tell you what, what a finish here tonight. But I'll tell you what, I'm standing down here in Victory Circle. Got Guy Snyder. I'm going to hand him the microphone here in just a minute. But I'll tell you what, dude, I, you had a 14-second lead on the rest of the field, you and uh, Chad Tracy. And, of course, Caution comes out on lap 72. What was going through your head at that point? Well, it was actually uh, Chad Cole, and uh, but I mean, it was a, it was, uh, it was confusing. I was so many emotions. I really was afraid or uh, upset that we had lost that huge lead that we worked so hard to make, and it was a uh, pretty. Uh, astounding, considering the uh, field of drivers we have here, and then uh, then I needed the fuel actually that that yellow gave us. So, uh, I mean, I guess it turned out all good, right? Absolutely. Yeah, my bad. Uh, you're right. Actually, it was Chad Cole, not Chad Tracy. But I uh, tell you, you know, there at the start finish line, I don't know if you looked in your rear view mirror and, and saw the carnage that took place as you guys motored on uh, past uh, the start finish line. But I tell you what, some some sheet metal. Uh, uh, being torn up back there behind you. Did you, did you uh, get a look at that, or uh, or you just keep uh, keep looking out the windshield? I'm looking at the big screen here. You know, watching it all. Um, I did see it happen, and uh, I really I I saw that the guy on the outside lost his drafting partner too. So I kind of figured I had it in the bag. Uh, it's a shame for Chad Cole because I mean we thought with three laps that he would have enough that he could just stay glued to my bumper, and uh, looks like his motor cut out right there coming out of four which is pretty upsetting but i mean at least i got the win i guess <laughs> tell you what first one of the season that always looks good i'll tell you what any shout outs out there you want to give yeah uh i gotta thank chad cole uh, it's a shame that uh you guys didn't drag him up in the booth there uh coming to get that um that last restart there because uh you know he really i got two interviews and uh he's my you know, a main partner in crime there. He uh, uh, couldn't have done this without him. He's, uh, I wish he would have got the second. The one-two would have been great. And uh, pretty much just got to thank RSR, all the admins, uh, Joey, and uh, thanking you guys for covering the race. And thanking Paul Menard for having a cool car that uh, I get to drive one that looks like I like his. Outstanding. I'll tell you what, next time around, we'll get you both together up here in the booth. No problem there, my friend. And, uh, again, congratulations on the win. First one of the season here at Daytona International Speedway. I'm going to throw it on down to uh, Rick, the law dog, Donathan. I believe he's caught up with our third-place uh, winner tonight, John Gregorio. And, uh, uh, Rick, uh, we're unable to locate uh, Chad Tracy, who uh, earned the second-place uh, win tonight. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, throw the microphone on your way. Absolutely, and I'm standing here with John, and John, i tell you what, man, heck of a race out there. The last few laps, you kept inching on up there at one time, seeing you was about to take a move, but you didn't have a drafting partner with you. Take us through that last lap. Yeah, going into this race, I didn't really have a partner, so i got to thank the guys at That's Right Racing for uh, working with me today. And I thought we had set up that pass uh, pretty well. Um, Tyler Price was pushing me really good there, and uh, we had the run for sure. And we got to uh, Guy Snyder's door, and uh, that's when the mayhem occurred. And kind of tried to slow him down by rubbing his door, but it kind of backfired on me, and I wrecked it. Fantastic. Well, uh, it looks like you you had a third place finish here, and uh, when the when the carnage was happening behind you, it looked like you and Guy Snyder was uh, head to head, bumper to bumper, side to side, and it looked like something happened there. Did did, did he come into you, or did you just kind of lose traction, or what happened there? Well, I knew I had to do something, uh, you know, drastic to get that win because he already had his nose out in front of me. So I tried to pull next to him and just rub him, slow him down. But when I did, my car just shot right into the wall all of a sudden. And uh, still took that second place finish, but here I'm standing with third. Fantastic. Looking at the grid here, it looks like you started on the pole today and ended up with a third place finish. So you still got to be happy with the finish. The season's just started. Anybody out there you want to thank? For sure. Um, definitely got to thank J.D. Laird, you know, jdairgraphics.com. He uh, wrapped the car today and it looked beautiful on the track. So make sure you go to twitter.com, JDR Graphics, or jdrgraphics.com. And then, like I said, the guys at That's Right Racing, I think it was uh, Chris Owens, Tyler Price, Logan Bunning, Cameron Manis, 
Uh, they helped me out today. I didn't really have a team to work with, so they picked me up and made it uh, possible for me to finish top three. Um, other than that, not really. Fantastic. Well, hey, we congratulate you uh, on your third place finish here today, uh, uh, John, and uh, we wish you best of luck throughout the whole season. And I'm going to pass the mic back up to J.D. All right, guys, I'll tell you what, uh, one more time, uh, Chad Tracy finished second tonight. Congratulations to him and that 86 machine and uh, slicing and dicing through all that mayhem down there. Him and Guy Snyder uh, uh, finishing 1-2 here tonight. John Gregorio, third place. Chad uh, unable to uh, make it for the uh, post-race show. But I'll tell you what, we'll catch up with him again. Uh, you know, it, you know, Rick, uh, I know uh, uh, you came in about halfway through the race here, uh, taking over for Tracy, who had to uh, had to take care of some business tonight. But I'll tell you what, I have just witnessed one of the best races at Daytona in the last uh, oh, six or seven days that we've been broadcasting here uh, ever. So uh, I'll tell you what, hats off to all these guys here at Real Sim Racing League. No better group of uh, racers than what we saw just now right here at Daytona. Absolutely, J.D., and uh, just to let you know, I was borrowing your horse and buggy ride today, awesome stereo in that thing, and with that pop-out TV, I was watching a lot of the race before I was able to get here, excellent racing we saw here today, and uh, we've got these guys for quite a few more races, so I'm anxious to be here, anxious to watch these guys and see who comes out on the top at the end of the season. You bet. You know, uh, and one more time, Viper Technologies uh, throwing out one of those uh, Viper uh, 600 SR game seats out there. The one that's got that uh, rumble bumping seat in it. Surround sound the whole nine yards. ViperSR.com. So uh, thanks to uh, Jason and Greg uh, for doing that with uh, these guys for a real same sim racing league. That will be the uh, season trophy at the end. But I'll tell you what, if you enjoyed watching this race tonight, hey, you can watch it one more time. Get it over there at etv-eplay.net. And uh, looking at the schedule, guys, uh, some action coming our way tomorrow night. You want to catch Jesse the Outlaw, James, AJ, back in the house again with uh, Jesse Thursday night. I believe you guys are going to be in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We were there the, uh, the other night. And, of course, on Saturday night, back to Super Speedway action the Harold Lowry Super Speedway Series over there at uh, Veteran Sim Racer, so don't miss that action at uh, 9 o'clock on Saturday night, 9.30 Saturday night. And then on Sunday night, Road to the Pro at 9 o'clock with Jesse and AJ back in the house again. So a lot of racing coming your way on ATV. But uh, AJ, uh, again, buddy, thanks for joining us here tonight and calling the action from Pitt Road, my friend. Yeah, JD, it was uh, it was great. I watched a lot of Daytona races all week. I gotta say, I, I gotta agree with you, man. This was this was one of the best. And I was uh, I was down on pit road, man. I had to take off running to the booth uh, when them all them cars come crash, and uh, I got a broadcast tomorrow. I didn't want to get hurt. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you what. Uh, good job tonight, and always uh, always welcomed up here in the booth. Of course, uh, you know. Tracy and I and uh, and Rick, we've all got kind of an open door policy, and everybody's got a key to it anyway. In fact, I don't. I think the lock's broken anyway. Anybody can get in here. But to tell you, we do have a lot of fun here on ETV, and then all the fans out there in the chat room. Uh, we apologize for the chat room. We're just uh, you know beta testing uh, another chat uh, room out there. It doesn't look like it's working out, so we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I was gonna say something, but I can't because we're on TV. But we're gonna can that one. We're gonna blank can that one and get a new one if you know what I mean. But i tell you what, uh, for Guy Snyder, Chad Tracy, John Gregorio here at Daytona, and all the rest of the boys here at Real Sim Racing League, that's going to be a wrap, and we're going to catch you next time right here on ETV Live.